okay and uh, and within the context also of these correlations here that we will work on uh, more specifically uh, tomorrow uh, where the uh, the uh, the process of of reaching a high really is coming from from the self up to this first level you see where we enter into a, uh, a one-sided ego consciousness a very very necessary consciousness in order for us to plunge back down into these deeper levels okay to plunge into what Jung calls the shadow into the wounded child to plunge into what Jung calls uh, the feminine and the masculine principles uh, that third level that you that I also call the new child and then to plunge into the self itself the divine child okay and to bring into play the human activities of work and of love and of play and to pray and pray that correlate with these four levels okay and uh, where uh, Meister Eckhart's four levels one of the great uh, uh, universal mystics also have their correlation but we're not going to focus directly on him but it, uh, this is there for you to pay attention to and also to see that that, that there are bodily correlates uh, to this process also with the head referring uh, to the uh, the ego level and the heart uh, to the level of the wounded child uh, and the uh, the guts wound, the sexual organs uh, correlated with the new child and with the, the uh, element of play very very important and finally, the whole subtle body, or the, if you will, the dancing body associated with the self. All these provide the framework for the archetypal journey in which the healing of addictions occur. Okay, and another reason why this course is uh, important, I mean this workshop is important, is because uh, of the Jungian literature that's uh, now available. Now again, I've asked you to read uh, Linda Leonard's Witness to the Fire. I also recommend uh, another book for those of you who are who want to pursue a Jungian approach, but more from understanding uh, drug addiction specifically in terms of uh, a, a cultural love. Uh, uh, base Luigi Zoya Luigi Zoya Z O J A a, uh, a Jungian from uh, from Italy has written a book called Drugs Addiction and Initiation The Modern Search for Ritual and further uh, Marion Woodland's uh, books are very very important here because of the work that she has uh, done with uh, uh, with obesity and with uh, nervosa anorexia uh, but of, of her books the most important is addiction to perfection the still unravished bride now again the term uh, uh, archetype for those who you do not turn refers to, do not understand this term refers to innate, inborn, natural, or if you will, God-given patterns in the psyche. These patterns are first potencies of psyche. Okay? Only potency, uh, but always there and available uh, to be actualized. And appear, you see, uh, in uh, literature, appear in rit uh, ritual, in fairy tales and, and myth, in scriptures and uh, in poetry, appear in dreams as powerful images, usually of a spiritual nature. That is, they appear like, uh, as it were, gods and goddesses, or have a like, godlike, larger than life uh, 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 quality, always with specific uh, attributes. For example, the uh, the masculine warrior uh, is aggressive. Is a metaphor of war. Um, and disciplined work. Um, it's the assertive part of us. And a softer archetype is the lover. Some people are uh, authentically identified with this archetype, just as much with this archetype as others are with, uh, with the uh, warrior. Each such universal pattern is constituted in such a way that there are both positive and negative aspects. 
Now that is very, very crucial because the process of healing any kind of emotional affliction involves a transformation and the symbols you see the universal symbols are vehicles of transformation and we'll get into uh, examples of that now Zoya points out that any drug addiction for example includes three factors one physical organic habit formation and recall that uh, that Bill Wilson's uh, uh, doctor spoke of this as a, a kind of allergy. Two, conditioned psychological habits. Uh, again, these two are in a corresponding way like the two that, uh, that Bill Wilson's physician uh, talked about. But, again, he says nothing of a third kind. The third element which Jung eventually points to in his response and which Zoya here expands on, and I'm going to read to you a quote from his book on page 31. The third aspect of all addictions, not just drug addiction, is the presence of a para-religious element, and he adds, we might also define the element as sacred, which unlike the other two elements, is neither acquired nor culturally conditioned, but is rather an archetypal tendency. This element would be responsible for the spontaneous formation of rituals, and now here specifically for the drug addict's tendency towards esotericism, looking for the unusual, mysterious, the occult. The fact that the third element is the least conscious explains to some extent why most other schematizations of drug addiction tend to be reductive, concentrating only, only on its physical and conditioned aspects. As we see from the ineffectiveness of most drug treatment programs, the problem of addiction is not easily conducive to such reductive terms. What Zoya is saying, what was what Jung was saying is in his response to Bill Wilson, when he writes that liquor in Latin means spiritus, which in, in Latin also means soul, okay? Same thing. This, these people are saying that the reason why an addiction requires a spiritual archetypal solution, like uh, Wilson's conversion, is because the essence of addiction is first and foremost a spiritual archetypal problem okay. we say in every neurotic problem that the archetype or God of that problem is the God who wounds and the God who heals this is another way of saying again that in each great symbol in each archetypal or universal symbol there is both a positive and negative potential depending on how it is understood and used by human beings so writes Zoya, an archetypal meaning underlies uh, crucial terms in all of the addictions. Now, he takes the word addiction itself. He says the word addict appears in England around the 16th century. And it comes from the Latin addictus, which means handing over to someone. Addiction thus originally meant giving oneself over, but little by little. The meaning uh, uh, became connected with the use of, of drugs, uh, however, um, in a progressive way. A similar etymological evolution took place with the verb to crave, which come to us, comes to us from the Old Norse verb for to ask or to demand intensely. Therefore, to crave, you see, is practically like to pray. To pray. 